Hello everybody, I'm James from GG Dreamcast, and today we're continuing our playthrough of Shenmue for the Sega Dreamcast. So we're going to start up quick and uh, get to work here in the harbor. We're going to talk to Mark and uh, learn what we have to do for, for the day. If you've already watched um, all the episodes of the playthrough, you'll know where we're at in the story. If you haven't followed the story, I would go back and watch the episodes of the playthrough leading up to this one. Uh, because we're getting towards the end of the game here. This is, in fact, going to be the second to last episode of uh, our playthrough of Shenmue. So the next episode will be the last episode. We'll get to see the ending and uh, see how Shenmue ends. But for now, let's just uh, continue working. As you can see, we're stacking lots and lots of crates. I've edited this quite a bit so that... Uh, oh, Rio's eyes are a little messed up there. <laughs> okay, but we're just going to take a lunch break and um, see what happens with this uh, little cutscene. And we're going to take a little stop here to talk to the uh, homeless guy at the harbor and uh, try to get some information on the Mad Angels. Mad Angels being the uh, gang at Excuse the harbor, me. bunch of criminals and and uh, the bad it, guys. Man? I'd like to ask you about the Mad Angels. What for you want to know about them? Well, you get mixed up with them and you're just asking for trouble. Do you know anything about them? That gang's done growing in recent years, you see. They're in league with some big Chinese cartel, looking to take over Yokosuka. A Chinese cartel? They call the shots around this here harbor. They don't take kindly to interference by others, so watch yourself. Know anything else about that gang? I know you do well not to get yourself involved with them. What would your family do if something happened to you? But... I... You get mixed up with them and you're just asking for trouble. That's all I got to say about it. So you'll see in this episode as Ryo goes around the harbor asking people for information about the Mad Angels, pretty much everybody tells him to uh, keep his distance and don't get involved. They're bad people and uh, dangerous people. But of course, if Rio did that, we wouldn't have a story, so Rio, the character, is going to uh, keep pushing forward here. Hey, Theo. Yeah. How you like your work? It's okay, I suppose. Well, I expect a lot from you, Theo. Right. I'll do my best. Uh... Theo, you got any brothers or sisters? No. I don't really have a family anymore. Oh, um, sorry to hear that. That's an interesting question for Mark. We learn in this episode uh, why he might be, uh, that might be on Mark's mind, family and brothers and sisters. So yeah, it's lunchtime, so I decided to kill some time here to throw some darts. Um, I edited out a lot of the dart playing. But yeah, there's always something to do in Shenmue um, in between these periods of, of activity. And uh, as you see, the clock strikes two, and Rio's got to get back to work moving crates. He gets 400 yen per crate, which is pretty good. I would, uh, I would, I think I would do that. Why not? Especially if I was 18 years old. But as you'll see coming up, um, it's not just working, it's not just moving crates all day. Things happen to Rio as he's, uh, trying to get his job done. This guy is like a 50-year-old man picking here? on this 18-year-old kid. Children shouldn't play around with forklifts. You might get hurt, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and Rio's serious. Rio's always serious. He's uh, not us? interested. He just wants You're to fired. get back to his crates. Nice taxi you got here. Take me on home, okay? Get a move on. That's not a crazy Whatever. taxi reference, but we might as well just think it is. Hey, 
cut it out. Joke's on you, schoolboy. That's it. You're mine. It's showtime! All right, and now we get to uh, launch into the Virtua Fighter-inspired combat, the free combat in Shenmue. It's very much like a fighting game. There's a whole move set. If you've watched the other episodes of uh, this playthrough, you've seen seen it extensively. You've seen the fights, and you've seen we, we showed how you uh, level up uh, Ryo's abilities, learn new moves, and how you train and uh, practice and get better at them. But here, Ryo makes pretty quick work of these... Uh, low-level gang members. They're not much of a threat. Some of the fights in this game can be extremely difficult. I'm thinking of the fight between Chai and uh, some of the fights that you're gonna see later on in this playthrough, this this episode of the playthrough, can be quite challenging. Now you recognize those two in the back, the purple shirt and the uh, sort of beige shirt. Those are the guys that Rio fought earlier at the uh, Heartbeats bar and ran into at the tattoo parlor when uh, we, we were looking for Charlie. If you remember that, that was a long time ago, it seems like, <laughs> but uh, yeah, we remember them. So you start to see Rio is uh, losing his patience, and uh, in these confrontations, he seems to be getting more and more aggressive. You'll see that uh, continue in a little while. But now it's back to work after beating up like 20, 50-year-old men. <laughs> yeah, just back to work, moving crates. All their all their bodies are, uh, you know, I'm sure he just like put them all in the crates. And now he's just gonna stack the, uh, the people he beat up here. And they'll never be seen again. I think I left this in this video because I kind of get stuck here. I'm gonna sort of date myself here, but this is like an Austin Powers uh, <laughs> moment. But yeah, we got out of it pretty quick. And back to stacking crates. Oh, actually, we're just uh, at the end of the workday here, so... Finished for Rio's gonna go get paid, and, uh, and I think we're gonna explore the harbor a little bit to try to find more information on the Mad Angels. Okay, good job. Here's today's pay. Thanks. You met quota, son. So starting tomorrow, you'll get a 50 yen raise. That'll be 400 yen per crate. Thank you. Keep up the good work. Yes, thank you very much. And yeah, so Rio's just going to run around the harbor here and uh, try to find more information on the Mad Angels. Coming to this area uh, prompts a small event here. We're going we're gonna to learn a move from the homeless guy. Hey, mister. Oh, it's you, youngin. You been training? Yeah. That's great. Now then, I can show you how to use it. Use it? The shadow step move? It's rather hard to do, so I'll only do it once, so pay attention. Before, I just showed you how to slide behind your opponent. Once you're behind your opponent, strike the back of the neck. 
and unprotected necks weaker than you'd expect. An accurate strike can paralyze. Strike just after sliding past your opponent. If you practice, you'll get it. I understand. Thank you. Alright, so Ryo has learned a new move, Shadow Blade. It's a throw move. Very cool. So again, if we try to leave the harbor at this point, the uh, game will tell us to keep looking around the harbor. And uh, we eventually come across this event here, where Mark is uh, not in good shape. This time you're dead. And here's another one of those free battle fights. Again, same thing as just in the in the warehouse that we just went through. Except this one's a little tougher. There's more enemies, and the enemies are themselves more difficult. But we do get through it. So we've beaten them. Now we're going to make sure Mark's Mark, okay. okay. We're going to learn a little bit about his story. Oh, yeah, I'm all right. No problem. Oh, careful. So, looking for your brother. Yeah, my only brother. He's about your age. But now, he's probably at the bottom of the sea. Killed by the Mad Angels. Why would the Mad Angels kill your brother? It appears he may have leaked some important information. Is that why they... Probably. At least as far as I could tell, only one person was killed. So you're not sure? Was the guy who heard the information killed, or my brother, the one who leaked it? Oh yeah, Dill. I heard the information was about a black market deal with some Chinese cartel. A Chinese cartel? The GU men. Okay, so Rio has learned that uh, Mark has a sort of similar story where Someone he cares about was uh, badly affected by people at the harbor, and in his case, the Mad Angels. But through this, Rio has learned that the Mad Angels are sort of uh, in, in league with the Chi Yu Men, which is the organization that's uh, headed by Lan Di, the man who killed Rio's dad. So now he has sort of a lead, which is sort of try to get to the uh, leaders of the Mad Angels and uh, see if they can arrange for Rio to meet the Chi Yu Men and Lan Di by extension. I've got plenty of time to ask around. And that's just a little scene that happens anytime it uh, hits seven o'clock. We get this nice little uh, musical scene of the lights turning on as night falls in whatever area Rio happens to be in when that happens. That was the uh, harbor sequence. But again, we're just gonna walk around and we're just still looking for information on Mad Angels and where to find them and how to talk to them and there. So let's Goro. talk to Goro. Let's we see Goro, Goro up here. Let's see if uh, Goro has Have any information it? for us. Oh, bro. You know, right? Ah, bro. Well, I ain't got no choice, I guess. Motorcycles, they ride around the harbor at night. All right, at so night, Goro huh? tells us that at night, the Mad Angels come out and they ride motorcycles around the harbor. So we're just running around a little bit more and then uh, eventually Rio tells us. I should go home. Yeah, that he should go home. So we head to the bus stop, wait for the bus. I speed up the footage here. <laughs> but this is the persistent world of Shenmue. 
the buses come on a schedule and uh, you can't get out of the harbor until the bus shows up at which point Rio takes the bus home and runs through the whole town to uh, get back to his house So here you're getting a very fast overview of the uh, game world. I was all through Dubuita and Sakura Gaioka and uh, Yamanose. And now we're back at Ryo's house and I decide to uh, give Nozomi a call. This is another example of the persistent world of Shenmue. You can, at any moment, if you want, you can just uh, pick up your phone and call any of your friends. You can call the police. Um, you can call Nozomi, which is uh, Ryo's sort of... Uh, I, I don't know if I'd call her a love interest because Ryo doesn't seem too interested. He's got more on his mind right now, but she is sort of the, uh, I guess, the um, a friend of Rio. Yes, hello. Hello, it's Rio Hazuki. Oh, yes. What is it? Sorry to call so late. Is Nozomi there? No, she hasn't come home yet. I see. Should I have her call you when she gets home? No, thank you. All right, if you're sure. Yes, sorry to bother you. Don't mention it. Okay, and that's Nozomi's grandmother who uh, owns the Ida flower shop. Uh, but Nozomi's not home, so we're just going to head into our room and uh, Ryo's going to hit the hay, get ready for another day at work tomorrow. At this point in the game, when you go to bed and wake up, you automatically go to Yokosuka Harbor, so you are kind of locked into the, the sequence of events here. Um, if you want to just explore Shenmue, the best thing is to just not get a job at the harbor until you're totally done with everything you want to do in the uh, first part of the game. Yeah, so we're back at work, and uh, the the morning of every workday, you'll see here, we uh, we do this forklift race. And it's kind of fun. It's kind of weird. It's, you know, Shenmue's interesting. It's, it's, it's like a game where I think they were developing it for so long and Yu Suzuki had all of these big, big ideas. And then, of course, I'm sure other people in the team brought their ideas to it. And it seems like they just, they just put every idea into this game <laughs> that, you know, anyone came up with something, they were like, yeah, we can do that. Let's do that. And the game just became this sort of big, you know, that, that's part of the reason this game was so big. It was just this... The first time we had this giant uh, sort of, Ready, like I say, persistent go. world where all these uh, game mechanics are happening all the time. And there's all kinds of different things you can do. So anyway, this is one of them, the forklift races. Interestingly, you when you race in the forklift race, you get a prize for every place that you Finish. play. So if you get fifth place, you get the fifth place prize. If you get fourth, third, second, you get the corresponding prize, uh, which is a fork, little you forklift really toy with practice. the number on it that you place. Um, so I think in this one I get forklift number four. Okay, so I came in fourth place, and you see Mark was like, you know, <laughs> you didn't do very good, Rio, but here's your uh, weird prize. But imagine this too, like, imagine a bunch of grown men working at a harbor on forklifts, and every morning they have a race, and they've, they've created or like had manufactured these little toys to give out every day, like literally every day, they give out five forklift to toys to each 18. person. That placed map. first through fifth. It's very funny. Um, that never happened at any place I worked. Okay, uh, I kind of wish it did, but it didn't. But either way, the race is over. Rio did pretty bad today, but uh, I do that on purpose, actually, because I'm a weirdo and I want to get every forklift. So <laughs> I intentionally, throughout these races in my playthrough, I intentionally get, you know, first place, second place, third place, fourth place, fifth place, so that you can get every forklift uh, uh, number toy. <laughs> Very stupid and very silly, but uh, anyway. So yeah, so now the uh, the whole day we're just going to be doing these crates. We're going to move crates. It sometimes feels like you do this for a long time in the game. Way. It's kind of true. You move forklifts for like 20, 20 minutes um, every day, but I guess that's kind of work, right? I mean, that's they're trying to uh, give you the impression that Rio's working and making money. So anyway, here's a lot of... <laughs> here's a strange montage of for <laughs> forklifts and maps. You know, I'm not the best video editor, but I do what I can. Um, so here you go. Enjoy this. Lunchtime, eh? And now we're at our lunch break. So uh, Rio uh, is going to have lunch with his pals at the harbor. And then actually we get a nice, nice little event here, which is uh, one of my favorites in the game. So let's enjoy this.
Let me take a picture of you two. No, that's okay. Don't be shy. Stand there. Here we go. Both of you get in closer. Smile. That's it. Here goes. Which do you want? Yo? Oh, this one. Okay, this one's yours, and this one's Nozomi's. They're keepsakes. What's with her? I... I'm going to Canada. What? I took a while to decide, but... Hey, if it's what you've decided, it's what you've decided. Ryo, don't do anything stupid. Of course I won't. I'll always treasure this. Ryo, take care of yours too. I will. I'll come back when I'm on vacation. Sure. Bye then, Ryo. Nozomi. Okay, so there's another touching moment with Nozomi. Really nice. Um, she's just such a good friend to Ryo and uh, really cares about him. But uh, sadly, Ryo just can't sort of reciprocate that because he's just got, you know, in his mind, he's got more important things to deal with right now. Um, but that event is interesting. You get to choose which of the uh, sort of Polaroid pictures you want. If you pick the one where uh, Ryo and Nozomi are close to each other, Nozomi actually gets a little bit sad because she then gets the other one where you're not really close to each other, and she wants the one that, you know, Ryo and her are standing close together. So in my playthrough, I pick the one um, where Ryo and Nozomi are a little bit further apart so that she can have the one where we're close together. And that just gives her a little bit of a different uh, reaction in the cutscene. So another another example of a little detail in this game. Uh, there are thousands of details in this game. Was it number eighteen? Um, countless details uh, that that work to uh, make it sort of a a real experience. Uh, but now we're back to work, of course, and we work all day. I've I've sort of fast forwarded here to uh, evening time, when the work day is about to end. So we're going to move this last crate and uh, see where the rest of the day takes us. for the day. Okay, good job. Here's today's pay. Thanks. You met quota, son. So starting tomorrow, you'll get a 50 yen raise. That'll be 450 yen per crate. Thank you. Keep up the good work. Yes, thank you very much. Okay, so Rio has gotten paid for the day, and now we remember, if, if you remember from the uh, day before, everybody told us that the Mad Angels come out at night, that they're bad people, you know, stay away from them. And then we got that good information about uh, them coming out late at night on motorcycles to sort of, you know, I, I guess ride around the harbor and sort of uh, do, do whatever they want, I guess the wildest time of, of night at the harbor. So we're just going to kill some time until it's late enough that the Mad Angels come out. And uh, as always, I love to go here and play some darts, buy I'm some uh, music in the store and uh, buy some capsule toys. Yeah, just all this stuff that sort of uh, adds to your collection in Shenmue. But let's head outside and uh, see if we can have a run in with the bad guys.
smooth move. You ain't so bad, punk. Why, you... But your time's up. You wish! <laughs> no one takes on the mad angels in this harbor and lives to tell about it. It's the bottom of the sea for you. Get him! So the stakes are rising, as you can see. These these mad angels mean business. They're not they're not just gonna beat up Rio and then you know call him a punk and walk away or whatever. They're they're threatening him. They're telling him you know if we uh, keep causing trouble for us, you're gonna sleep with the fishes, I guess. But uh, Rio's not gonna take that. So we're gonna have another free battle here. We're gonna beat up these mad angels and see where this takes us. Again, this fight is not easy. It's uh, one of the harder fights. It's not as difficult as, as, you know, the fight with Chai in the arcade, which is, I think, the toughest fight in the game for me. I've had a lot of trouble with that one. But uh, they are challenging, and we, we get through it here. And let's see, uh, and let's see what happens. You little brat, I'm gonna break your face. Come on! Angels and Chi Ming connected. Uh, I, I don't know. What? W wait. I don't know if he's Chi Ming, but there's some Chinese big shot leaving here soon. Uh, big shot? Yeah. They had me arrange a cruiser to take him out to a big ship offshore. What's his name? Uh, I don't know, but I hear he wears some silk robe thing with a dragon on it. Landy. He's still around here. Please, I beg you, don't tell anyone I told you. They'll kill me! Wow, so that's big news. We just learned that Landi is actually still around Yokosuka Harbor, which is huge for Ryo because this has been just a mystery this whole time. He doesn't know who Landi is. He's been trying to figure this out the whole game, and uh, he didn't know if he went back to China, he went back to Hong Kong. It's all been a mystery, and uh, but now Rio finally sort of has the clo he's the closest he's been yet in this entire game to meeting Landi face to face. You know, the man that killed his dad, and uh, trying to uh, get his revenge. But uh, so that's the end of that night. We head back to uh, Rio's house. I cut all that out so you don't have to watch us go through. But we're just gonna head off to bed, and uh, Rio's gonna have a nightmare tonight about uh, Landi. You can see he's very focused on Landi. It's uh, it's, uh, it's an all-consuming thing, so he just uh, thinks about him all day, dreams about him all night. And in the morning, he has to go back to work oh, for and another forklift race with the uh, crazy guitar music and uh, Mark hyping everyone up for another great work day <laughs> with a warm-up race. He's such a good foreman, don't you think? I mean, he keeps everybody's morale up. Maybe he maybe he makes the, uh, the forklift models at home. Maybe that's all he does. He, he drives his forklift all day, and then he goes home and makes five little forklift models to give to his crew every morning <laughs> after the forklift race. On your mark, almost time to go. 
All right, so we got to do three laps. I obviously I edit this a little bit so that you get to see, you know, just uh, a few clips of the high intensity uh, racing. So you can go first person mode, which is pretty cool. First person mode is actually quite a bit easier to uh, control for for me. I'm not sure why. It just sort of gives me more of a better perspective on on these things. Uh, but yeah, you can really thread the needle here. Like I think I go in between the the inside track here. Wow, that's that's advanced forklifting. But uh, here we are at the uh, finish line. Honk the horn a little bit. And I got fifth place this time. Last time I got fourth place. I got fifth place so that I could get the uh, number five forklift toy. Now back in the day when I played this game for the first time in you know, the year 2000, 22 years ago or whatever it is. Getting these toys, like, we already knew because uh, the magazines were telling us that Shenmue 2 was, was coming. We already knew Shenmue 2 was going to be happening. And uh, the magazines, I know the official Dreamcast magazine mentioned that uh, all your stuff from Shenmue 1 was going to be transferable over to Shenmue 2 in the uh, VMU, the visual memory unit, which was the memory card that the Dreamcast used. Um, so you would you would put your save file from Shenmue 1 into Shenmue 2 and you'd have all your stuff. So I was like super obsessed with just getting everything in this game. I for some reason wanted to carry it over to Shenmue 2. Of course the uh, ultimate tragedy uh, for Shenmue fans <laughs> back then was that um, Shenmue 2 would never be released for the Sega Dreamcast in the United States, which when you think about it today is just sort of like mind-blowing. I mean, so it's, it's like baffling that, that Shenmue 2 did not come out on the uh, Sega Dreamcast in the United States. But I think that's because Sega made a, a business deal with Microsoft to release it on uh, Microsoft's new Xbox once Sega knew that uh, the Dreamcast was going to be discontinued. Uh, Sega was uh, making business deals with other other companies, obviously. So, But that's fine. But, but so we never really actually got to uh, transfer our save file from Shenmue 1 to Shenmue 2 in the United States. I'm actually not sure if you import the PAL version for uh, us United States or North America-based... Um, Dreamcast players. I'm not sure if you imported the uh, European version, if the sh if the save file transferred over. I think it did. I did import the uh, European version of Shenmue 2 for the Dreamcast way back then, in like, I think 2002 or something. Um, and I did play it on Dreamcast first, but then I played it again on, on the Xbox. I just, it was so long ago that I don't remember that detail. But either way, sort of a long story to explain why I was so obsessive about getting every uh, forklift here. Lunchtime, eh? Another forklift morning has ended and we're at our lunch break again. Just have another little scene here with uh, our pals from the uh, docks having lunch. Hey, Tiyoshi. Hey, Ryo. So hey, what's your girlfriend like? Uh, I don't really have one now. You know, I really like women that are intelligent as well as cute, sweet, and honest. Yeah, those are good qualities. I just know that there's someone like that out there for me somewhere. I hope you find her. No, oh, I hope you find her too. That's very cute. But yeah, so in between your, you know, during your lunch break, you have some time to kill. You can run around the harbor and talk to people or you can go to the store. Here I go to the store real quick after talking to a couple people and um, just buy some uh, cassette tapes. Again, same thing as the forklift trucks. Uh, there's a bunch of cassette tapes in the game that you can buy that have uh, music from the game. And then you can play it on your Sega cassette player, which Ryo has in his inventory. And again, same thing, like this would have carried yeah, over to Shenmue sure. 2 uh, Thank you very if you uh, transferred your save file over. But again, at the Tomato Mart, I showed this in another uh, episode of our playthrough. When you buy something sure. of a certain a value, ticket. you can use, you can enter the um, raffle and, and win prizes that you can't get elsewhere in the game. So here I won fifth prize. Fifth it's just prize. a uh, capsule toy. I think I get Akira from Virtua Fighter Kids here. And again, we're just uh, hanging out. We're just killing some time. We're buying toys. We're playing darts. We're doing whatever, whatever we feel like doing until it's time to go back to work. I mean, it's pretty impressive. Ryu gets a two-hour lunch break. I don't know if that's a normal amount of time for a lunch break in Japan, but uh, it seems like a lot here. <laughs> uh, but we get Opa Opa from uh, Fantasy Zone. The what? Master System. This again? And 
and uh, there's a jukebox where you can play, play music from the game. So you just go through here and pick whatever you want to listen to. And uh, it plays as long as you are in this uh, harbor lounge. Once you leave the harbor lounge, the music goes back to uh, what it normally is. We'll just listen to some music real quick. And here's our cassette tape. We can listen to uh, the cassettes as well, but... And just like that, it's uh, time to head back to work. It's two o'clock, so to we're work. gonna get back on the forklift and uh, continue our work day. Now the song is called Working Man. It's a great song. It's just like sort of a relaxing song. I included it on my Dreamcast relaxing music mix. You can listen to that. I'll put a link in the description below. But uh, now we're on the forklift and we're gonna we're gonna run into another event here. Another event in the workday. Oh man, it's our friend Goro, bro. Bro! Oh, this seems this doesn't seem like a trap, does it? Hey, over here! Hey, over here. Like, Wait. yeah, I'm just gonna follow you. He's coming! Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! I took the bait! So you showed, eh? You guys again. What's your problem? Let me you. I think we're gonna see here Rio Rio really starts to lose his patience with these guys he, he's uh, sort of you know he's been chasing these mad angels and now he's kind of tired of it you're gonna pay for being a Goro you his girlfriend what did you say best watch your back next time it won't be just you what we're gonna go after your family and friends Gonna get him. That's it. Oh. So there you go. Rio has had enough of these punks. He is uh, he's at the end of his rope with them, and you'll see he's uh, becoming increasingly more violent, <laughs> which is kind of something that his uh, dad told him not to do as he was uh, passing away in, in Rio's arms. If you remember back to that first episode of this playthrough, Rio's dad told him to uh, just take it easy and uh, keep his friends and, and family and people that he loves close to him. Everybody along this whole path has tried to uh, advise Ryo to just give it up. Just don't, you know, don't seek revenge. Nothing good is going to come from it. Some of uh, his dad's oldest friends, in fact, have told him uh, quite directly that, uh, you know, his dad would not want him doing this. But uh, Ryo is uh, charging ahead, and I think that's quite a uh, powerful theme in this uh this game in this series that uh, Ryo may not be doing exactly what uh, his dad would have wanted him to do. Finished for the day. Okay, good job. Here's today's pay. Thanks. You met quota, son. So starting tomorrow, of course I met quota. You'll get a 50 yen of course raise. I did. I'm a master uh, forklift operator. You know how to move crates. Thank you. Keep up the good work. Yes, thank you very much. 
But anyway, Rio got paid for the day, and uh, now we're gonna, you know, bebop around the harbor again, talk to some people and see if we can get more information. And uh, we do pretty quickly with uh, our pal Mark here. Hey, Dio. I overheard some information. Information? I heard them all whispering something about Long Ja. That is soon. Long Ja? Best I can figure, it's some mad angels black market deal. Makes sense. They've been on edge lately. Long Ja. When's it supposed to happen? Alright, so Mark has told us that uh, there's some Mad Angels black market deal going on called the Long Ja. And uh, Rio wants to know when this deal's going down because I think he just wants to crash the party and uh, <laughs> see if he can catch the Chiyu men and uh, the Mad Angels having a meeting. Obviously, his best case scenario in his mind is that Lan Di will actually be there Mark, and I'd be able yo, to confront him at that I got time. Some big news. Huh? I overheard Tony and Smith saying that a Long Ja is going down soon. Really? When's it gonna happen? Maybe within the next few days. I see. Be careful, Dio. Yeah, you too, eh? No problem. I'm cool, but I'm worried about you, Dio. The date of the Long Ja. Someone must know. Yeah, but finding out ain't gonna be easy. To them, it's like a really big deal, you know? Maybe the only option is to ask them directly. Well, maybe, but Dio... Believe me, I know, but I'm prepared to take the risk. Dio... So we talk to Mark again, and um, he gives us some more information that there's uh, two foreigners that are here to uh, maybe organize that deal, and uh, Rio's gonna start looking for them. Mad Angels, Chiyu men, Rio's just uh, trying to get to the bottom of this. Excuse me. What is it? Have you heard about some deal the Mad Angels are arranging? Well, I wouldn't know about that, you know. So you haven't seen any of them around? Nope, but I saw a couple of sailors acting kind of suspicious. The harbor is full of all kinds of sailors, don't you know? Where did you see them? Over by the harbor lounge. All right, so Rio talks to uh, one of the foremen at the harbor, and he finds out that the uh, two people that he's looking for might be hanging around the harbor cafeteria, which is the harbor lounge. Uh, so we're going to run over there and see what happens. Hey, mister. Oh, youngin, it's you. I heard about you. Here you're after the Mad Angels. Yes. I know you want revenge, but... If something happened to you, how about the Hazuki tradition? But I... No buts, boy. If no one were left to carry on... Oh, what a shame that'd be. I will show you another move. Hmm? What's that move? It's called the cross charge. Just at the moment you evade, slam into your opponent's side. When you use up against multiple opponents, they can all gang up on you, you know. This move is perfect for times like that. Thank you very much. Okay, so on our way to the Harbor Lounge, we run across the uh, Homeless Man again, and he gives us yet another throw move, which is great. Um, obviously, there's more more than meets the eye to uh, this homeless guy. He's quite a martial arts expert. But uh, that's pretty much going to wrap up the day here at the harbor, so we're going to hop on the bus and uh, head back to our house, head to bed, and uh, wake up the next morning, and it's Christmas Eve. Wow. So even on Christmas Eve, Rio's got to go to work, so we get to, <laughs> we get back to the harbor, and here we are, another forklift race. Um, I think on this one I placed first place to get the, uh, the ultimate forklift prize. prize. There it is, forklift number one.
And I think Thanks. that forklift completes my collection, and that is actually going to complete this episode of our Shenmue playthrough. It's uh, just under an hour long, and uh, quite a lot happened. You know, you could look at this and be like, oh, well, it was just uh, forklifting and moving crates, but in between that, of course, there was all kinds of stuff. We had events with Nozomi, we had uh, events gotcha. with the Mad Angels, Today we got closer got to finding Londi, had some uh, good conversations gotcha. with people that First we've met, learned some moves, got some uh, capsule toys, bought some music, there. played some darts. We did a lot in this eight. episode, so I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, hit the uh, like you know button and subscribe right. so you don't miss the I next one. The next one will be the last one. We are at the end of Shenmue in the next episode, so I really hope you'll watch that one and see where this game concludes. Have a great day.